Uh, welcome to Disorder. I'm joined on the lovely Gibson shiny chairs by none other than Ian Watkins mm. from Lost Prophets. Hello, darling. Hello. 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 I, I like the con sorry, the contrast in style. Of, really? Yeah, with the name. Why? So you think, welcome to Disorder, there'd be like chaos going on. And, well, I can, and guitar I can, smashing in the background. <laughs> I think if I well, touch one of these... Disorder, punch through the world, it's a... Well, I wanted to touch one, but, you know, men dropped from the ceiling and, you know, get your hands off the guitars. Yes, but I'm not a musician, so... Oh, so I'm, I'm not allowed. Well, surely, if musicians touched them, they'd be allowed. Yeah, that's okay, but I have no talent. But anyway, we're not here to talk about, about Gibson Guitars, nice plug. We're here to talk about your new album. Where's the nice plug? Oh, well, are you, are you going for a new guitar? Sorry, I'm going for the Shane Ritchie uh, line of joke, of jokeage. That's my new word, kind of phrase. Sorry. Let's get on with this. Come on, then. New album. Mm. First in a while. Mm. Definitely the newest mm. one since the last. Yeah, that helps when it's called a new album. Tell me about... It was like, Actually, let's, let's kind of rewind a bit. You had a couple of false starts. Like Craig David. Yeah, re, re, yeah. Uh, in LA. You kind of scrapped... The original kind of well you did yeah. you scrapped it all yeah. threw it away went back to wales and redid it mm, yeah yeah kind of what was what brought that about it was subpar how far below par are we yeah how far below i mean were you actually thinking i don't want anything to do with this part well, and, it, and i'm gonna leave the, it all behind and then keep moving forward i'll put it into a nice analogy for you yeah okay go on if that album was uh a trip to say uh, fairground amusement park. Was it a house of horrors? No, what everyone um, would be expecting would be Alton Towers. Right. Yeah. You know? What it was was uh, Pensacana Wildlife Park. <laughs> yeah. Quite a downstep mm. then. Mm. Well, not really a downstep, more just kind of, oh, we've got a Lima. Wow. Yeah. And, uh, Lima's, Lima's are cool. They haven't got a push me polio. What's that? I'm just going to see one of them. It's, a, it's like um, a llama with two heads. Oh, the Dr. Doolittle yeah. kind of thing. Oh, I'm with you. See? Okay. And it's like push me polio. It's kind of like the, the... You should be giving them away with the new album. I don't have any. I don't have any drums. <laughs> and I shouldn't be giving away endangered species anyway, if they existed. That's like saying you should be giving away dodos. I would if I could. <coughs> well, Genetically modified Who's to blame dodos. for the state of the earth then? God? No, there is no God. Oh. We're getting quite existential here. Let's t let's let's move away from the, from the God push you, people. You think? You, you, no. you advocating the use of giving away endangered species to promote an album. That's it's a gimmick. Guessing. Everyone needs a gimmick. Oh. But okay. At what, <laughs> what point? They're dead anyway. Ian, every time you start getting off, I'm going to give you a, a, a little slap. Sorry. But tell me what at what point in LA did you think? This isn't working. Third and Vine. Third and Vine. Mm. At that juncture point, you just stood there and went, "I hate this album." Yeah. No, it was some some practicing tuba. <laughs> I think it's a door, actually. I know, so it's tuba. It's the guy who I hired to do the Johnny Briggs theme to. That walks with me everywhere. Oh, this is going to be a long interview, isn't it? I'll, I'll cut it down if you want. Yeah, go. If you on. want mundane, here we yeah. go. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, it was a. Uh, it was. It was. <clears throat> It was a day in LA on the corner we, of a, you know a street. What? We just realised. Well, I kind of. Well, yeah. We, I never used to. I never listened to it. And usually, when we do a record, we always listen to it back. I can't you know, get really excited if I am listening to it all the time, and I just, I just couldn't put it on. And How it far like, into it were you? We finished you, it. Oh right, so it was yeah. all done in yeah, the can, and you just went. Because we 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 always had faith. Like whenever you go with a producer, you kind of have to put your trust in him. So we were hoping that. He's gonna, you know, no, it's alright. He's gonna turn around at the last minute. That just didn't work. No. So you came back, and you got your own in-house Stuart, mm. and then a guy, yeah. a guy called Justin, who, as far as I know, worked on Attack Attack, mm. um, in to do duties. Was that a little bit like a rebellion against what had been happening with the last time? Because you had Bob Rock, and it was all very Hawaii and big producer man, and, and now you're like back away. It wasn't Jack Johnson, was it? Jack said, Johnson? Yeah, that was very Hawaii. I wouldn't say the last album was very Hawaii. No, I'm not saying the album was Hawaii, but you were in Hawaii. Yeah. The so same. the whole experience of recording was, an album was, Hawaii, a was very Hawaii. Yeah. yeah. Um, moving back to Wales, mm. was it almost like a homecoming for you, or, or were you just kind of running from, from, 
what you'd been experiencing. It was it was more of an escape route. Um, yeah, it, it was just kind of when you get you've had enough of one place, and you just you know you need to step outside it and just like, right. Um, it, it, but we don't. It wasn't really kind of like a big conscious decision to do it. You know mm. what I mean? It wasn't. It was more we'd spent so long in LA, you know, doing the record and doing all that. It was it was more kind of. Yeah, we need to get out of this, and that's where we live. Well, that's where we we grew up. So, it seemed like the natural kind of thing to just go there and chill out. And did the writing start again and feel better immediately, or did you have to kind of acclimatise well, yourself again? No, it was fine. I mean, because so a lot of the songs on the first, you know, scrap one, are songs we wrote anyway, and they're still and they're on the new, you know, they're on mm. the album. It was just the way they were developed and produced. Excuse me, it was uh, just the wrong direction. You know, and we, we kind of, like I said, we had faith that they'd eventually turn in the right direction and, you know, the producer would know, was, was on a wavelength and knew what he was doing. Mm. And it just, and then it got so far, I was like, yeah, this isn't going to really change. So we took the songs that we really believed in that were already written, um, wrote some new ones and, and then it's kind of, it's the old thing of if you want something done properly, you've got to do it yourself. That's quite true. Very true. The album title, was that always mm. The Betrayed? Yeah, ironically. That's, that's quite um, heavy duty, kind of yeah. like The Betrayed. It sounds but quite it, dramatic. But it, it needed to be though, it, it needed to be the antithesis of all the other albums. Because I think, you know, I'd said everything I wanted to say regarding, you know, you know rally call other people, let's do it, you know, fight the apathy and conditioning of society, blah, blah, blah. I wanted to kind of, you know, do the Sith to the Jedi. Bit of like mind tricks and mm, yin and yang. Mm. And you what, can't appreciate the light without it in the dark. Do you think it's a, the most personal album you've ever done? Yeah, definitely. Because I mean, there's I saw it already reviewed in you know a couple of places. Mm. Won't, won't mention other magazines, and they're saying you know it's the biggest work you've done. You know the most accomplished. I mean, how would you sum it up? The biggest, the most accomplished really? work. Really? Yeah. No, it, 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 <laughs> Hardcore thinking that. It genuinely is. I, I think, but I think that's because we we did it ourselves and we did it with Stuart. You know what I mean? Like every other album, especially when it comes to lyrics, you have to explain yourself. Or like, what do you mean here? What do you mean here? What, and it's just like, you know what? It's just easier to make up something or some hy hypothetical situation and not really put yourself in it. Because mm. if you're writing about something which is real and, and true, and then you have to explain it. It's like, it's, A, you're taking out all the, any emotion that was kind of vested in there by having to kind of clinically break it down. And B, it's just really horrible and uncomfortable to do, you know? Whereas, because Stuart knows me, and we've known each other, you know, for 20 odd years, there was no need to do that. He knew what I was singing about, he knew where I was going, he knew what I meant. Mm. So I could just do it. Without explanation. Was he quite comfortable doing, you know, taking off one hat, putting on another kind well, of yeah, well, producer face, producer face? He's always done that. I mean, he's like, even before we were signed, he'd do our demos. You know, me and him would spend hours in this little studio where he used to work, um, just tracking you know stuff. And this, and that was before like Pro Tools and before Auto Two and before you know when it's still tapes. Vinyl. So, <laughs> yeah, before gramophones. You know. Two tin cans yeah, and a yeah, piece of string. Exactly. Record on stone tablet. That must be. You know, oh, it's going to make a really bad joke, but I won't do it. It's just too bad. Why? why Dad stop? joke. Well, uh, so, you know. dignity. That's what it is.